Ulugule, Papua New Guinea, and welcome to another edition of Rendezvous with Leanne. I'm here in beautiful Coples, Goroka, where I'm here to interview a very, very talented Papua New Guinean bilu maker, also known as Bilu Mary, Miss Florence Jaukae Kamel. So tell us a little bit about yourself, the whole of Papua New Guinea and internationally we know you as the Bilu Mary, but tell us a little bit about your background. Well firstly thank you to the viewers of Papua New Guinea and those that are around us. Um, yeah, uh, Florence is, uh, is, is my name and I'm actually from Goroka. I'm from Goroka, I'm mixed parentage of uh, East Sipik. And uh, I am I'm actually born and raised here in Goroka. And uh, well, I came into, I started weaving, I, I learned weaving from my mother and my grandmother when I was a small girl, but I never, never actually taken that as an important uh, skill that has always been with a woman until uh, um, in 2000 and 2001 when I started having the interest of uh, um, doing bilum and in 2002 that was when I started wearing bilum dresses and promoting bilum and all this so yeah. The bilum Mary you have great designs on your you know different bilum dresses tell us a little bit about your inspiration where do you get these ideas from? Ah uh, okay uh, let's say in uh, the skill was actually being passed on by my mother and my grandmother and every Papua New Guinea woman who knows how to weave, they learn the skill from their mother, or uh, either from their mother or from their grandmother, sometimes from their aunties and uh, friends and all this. So it's a, bilum weaving is a skill that is passed on from a mother to the daughter or aunties to their uh, nieces and all this. So I for one with uh, my situation, I, I learned the skill from my mother and my grandmother. They're from Garuka, the Ifufa, um, Ifufa people. My mom is from there. And um, that, was, that was when I learned the skill, skill from there when I was like probably doing grade three, grade four, but it never came out to be something that I can take on board into doing that. It's just a skill that I learned, mm -hmm. but then I started, um, I forgot all about it because all the time I was in school and with the peer, peer group influence, I was running around doing all this. And then in 2002, I, 2001, I started into like, um, I actually, well, in some places, when you're wearing something, everybody wants to wear it. Uh, when you have your hair done some, mm. some way, everybody wants to do that. So then it all came out that I started wearing some certain style of clothes in town. And ladies in town will be saying, I'd like to wear that. Mm. Oh, Florence looks nice in that, so I want to wear that. So, And then uh, I, I got tired of people trying to wear the same things as I am wearing. And because mm. I was too popular and mm. too outspoken in my own town, yeah. I... I had the idea of, uh, there was this one time I was looking at the, my children's encyclopedia and all this, and then I saw the carpet snake, which was more like a chocolate kind of color, and the design was more like a KK design, it was going like zigzag kind, and I saw that and I, and I had a balloon that was of the similar design to that uh, carpet snake, mm -hmm. so I said, why can't I do a dress that can be the same as that? And then the color of the Christmas beetle, which was so fluorescent uh, green and just so bright and all this. So, so that those were the two types of dresses that I started. Um, I asked actually, I asked one of my in-law to start doing that, and we we created the design and the outfit. So, the first expose I had was, I had those two dresses, and I started wearing it in the streets. And then there were people going around, hey. Who does she think she is? There were two kind of people. One were going for me and one were against me. So those ones that were going for me, they were saying, hey, she looks beautiful. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm. Oh, 
oh, we're happy you do it. you're wearing bilum. Mm. And others were saying, who does she think she is wearing bilum dresses, uh, something that we carry food and baby in it. So, mm. But then because I was so outspoken and I was, mm. I, I, I should say I'm a little bit aggressive. Mm -hmm. So they, they don't have the guts to come and tell me you shouldn't wear that. But other people that were wearing that, they were other, other women and girls, especially most of them in those times that saw me wearing it and wanting to wear it, were the ones saying that, why are you wearing bilum dress? People were going against them, but they were not going against me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was how I started wearing the bilum dress in 2002. Okay, so I mean, that's a lovely tattoo. Can you tell us a little bit about that, um, a little bit about the background behind that tattoo? Well, people have different, let's say, firstly, Papua New Guinea is very diverse with its, with its uh, culture and tradition. So people will have their own interpretation and one say, oh, that's my, that's my tattoo. Well, let's say the Motuans or, you know, I, I'm not really into a tattooing, but uh, this tattoo is really, um, I had to have this, I have this one, it was done by Samoan tattooist at Makati Place in Sydney. He did a tattoo for me, it's a two year job that he did and it's a bilum design, a traditional bilum design. So with bilum, uh, from, the, from where I'm working with, with bilum, I'm into the fashion part of it and also, well with the fashion I've taken bilum as far as New York for the, um, it was on, out on the runway and you know, I was really excited seeing my bilum out on, uh, on the runway in New York and I actually went to under International Trade Center. I went over to New York um, and worked with uh, students from Parsons uh, School of Design with some students there. Then I went over to London Fashion University and worked with some students there. We, we all, uh, uh, um, I had a couple of my uh, dresses that were asked to be out on the runway in New York. So that was when I had the first international exposure to have my bilum dress out on the runway and I just sat there and I looked as my dresses went out and we had, um, it was more into ethnical fashion and we had the Ethiop Ethiopians with their uh, cotton and the Palestines with the embroidery, the Perus with alpaca, Mongolians with cashmere and um, the Indians with their beadings. And Papua New Guinea went with the bilum and, uh, and uh, when I saw my dresses out there it was from a simple woman from the village and that was where I'm, I'm, I'm from. Mm -hmm. And seeing all those uh, ladies out there, they were already into fashion industry and they already knew what it's like with international exposure and all this. And with bilum going out there, I was, um, I was lost, I didn't know how my bilum was there. And when the dresses came out later after the run, I mean after the after the show, I sat back and they asked me. We we had a, they asked me how did you feel, and I I told him, look, everybody's very well established. They've got uh, they've got their fashion school. They've got everything out there. But for me, uh, it's very raw, and it's out from the rainforests of Papua New Guinea, out on the catwalk in New York. So that was all I said and I told him, I'll see you all again mm -hmm. in the next uh, couple of years. So my, my vision and my aim now is to take Bilum out in there. Nothing is impossible, nothing is, uh, nothing is like, I don't like, I can't do it. I can do it, I always like that. So that's from the fashion part of it. And into the traditional part of it, I like to work with women, young girls, pass on the skills. Because if a mother doesn't pass on the skill to the daughter, it will soon go away. Yeah. And now when we have this Facebook and when we have all these things that are right now, you will not see any daughter that will make a bilum. Mm -hmm. But you'll see them most of the time, they're on the mobile phones, they're on Facebook. So it's, it's my worry now is to transfer, have the skills transferred into the young girls. So what has the reaction been like overseas? I mean, you mentioned about your reaction when your 
Bildung dresses were modeled overseas on the runways. How was the reaction with the international audience like? It, it was something new. And they were saying, uh, they all were, wow. Every, it's like, it's like, wow. And uh, that's to them. Everybody started, everybody's excited. Mm -hmm. And you see, uh, what I'm doing is ethnical. So everybody wanted to know about it. They all wanted to, but you know, at the same time, I'm trying to protect my traditional knowledge at the same time. And like, um, uh, there's different type of techniques that people use, the knitting where international communities use, and for Papua New Guinea, bilum. And the word bilum, you hardly find it in any, any dictionary. You can find that word. So bilum, when you say bilum, it's more confined to Papua New Guinea. And uh, when people say bilum Mary, it, it, the name itself makes me have a responsibility. And that is one, to raise the woman up. And like, I'm just a simple mother like everybody else. And I've been traveling a, ro a lot around the world, trying to find market and all this. And uh, uh, at the very same time, I'm very cautious with my traditional knowledge too. Because whatever I protect now will protect the women that are behind me. I cannot give out my traditional knowledge to an international community or a, somebody who is not from Papua New Guinea because it's very sensitive. Tell us how supportive the government has been in all of this or if they have been supportive. How, I mean, we can have the mining and we can have all this forestry or logging or whatever it is. You can have all these things, but at the end of the day, your, the majority of your country's population are simple people in the remote areas, the rural areas and in settlements and in small towns. The women are the main well, we all know that everybody's saying mama and backbone blow all get a something. Well, as the saying goes, we still repeat the same thing. And when you look at, we are good managers in the house. Even we have up, up and down, we have problems. But despite all this, we still stand as women, as mothers. And I am, I am happy I'm into this thing because when I sit back and look at our government, <laughs> same person. They don't, we just like, the Bilum Weavers, we just like nobody. We just one of the many people of Papua New Guinea. Nobody recognizes us. And uh, I spent a lot of money, money trying to promote and do all this with Bilum and my own money. It took me all these years. Only SPDC came in 2005, six, somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, in four, 2004 or five, they, they assisted us. But then they, uh, like, when I went around asking people about the market and you know, saying that, oh, can you help me? I'm trying to do this. Uh, they couldn't. Well, not forgetting IPA. IPA, IPA did took me down to Investment Promotion Authority. They did took, took me down to Kent in 2000 and seven for the business council meeting and I did a presentation, a co-presentation with Pacific Island Trade and Investment about Bilum. But then it was like I just went there, came back and there's this um, SBDC took me to Vietnam, to Hanoi uh, in 2006 for a woman entrepreneur kind of thing. But the woman here, what we actually need is proper training, a market. That's where we, that's what we need. And if a government can do it and for a outside donor country to come in and assist us, like International Trade Center, that's a bonus to us. And uh, like, it's a shame our people, our own government can't help us. But when you look at it, when they want vote, they come to us to vote for them. But they can't help us. So what do you see as the future of um, bilums and bilums in the fashion industry in Papua New Guinea? Well, I'm smiling and I'm laughing about it. I mean, I'm smiling about it because I see a bright future at the end of it. And I see International Trade Center has rescued us. And we have a big, big job to do now. And uh, I believe that there's something better out there. Because I've come from like 12, 13 years, I've been looking for market. I've been called a Bill and Mary, and I think, I'm believing that I've achieved 
most of my goal now and mostly with uh, having the support from ITC coming in is a bigger achievement. And I see mothers out there who will enjoy the benefit of it. Uh, you, you can introduce him you yet, you know, online. Uh, thank you. Nim lo miem Martin Aole. Mi yet bi blong Goroka, lo Eastern Highlands Province, na mi blong legally place inside long Faniufa. Na mi wam pla leader man inside long the slab area long Goroka district na na house lang mi Faniufa tu. Ina piu tokli alo one of kind look look or tintin you shall look look as community leader na lo observation blue you you round you look look lo side blue me plow mary na all mama lo one of kind walk me plus a make him no side blue bilum na lo look look blue you you look him government put him on or help him you can give him view blue you lo this plan thank you bilum and one plan something where all papa mama also walking before before yet all Papa Mama walk him come, also walk him na use him long, uh, carry him kai kai, uh, inside the bilum, na uh, pull up him baby inside long bilum, na or oh, plant all Arab or something too, uh, also walk him inside the bilum. You me Papua New Guineans, you me in and up talk all same, me no feed off long bilum. Uh, you me walk okay, the Papua New Guineans, you me can survey, and you me can talk all same, yes. Bilum and play some of the part inside on life, blow me blah. Now, look, look, blow me long. One is something where all mama is walk, walking Bilum now. Bilum and Molly, all work of sending him all, or kind, kind style now. All work walking planting now. Now, all work of all work pine old market. Long, all like Sarim, long street. All touristy come, all like Sarim. But, uh, me plan must make him this like come a one plan, one plan. Something whereby all Mary he can use him long Sarim, long all Arab country na all can make him some of money out long this Me look him government long me plan long long Papua New Guinea. Yeah, Minister long Minister Maru. I mean, I mean talk talk plenty long SME. But me play need long kiss him all all Mary, all sila all build him something na 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 market him all our side, so that and by extra revenue all can earn him through long long build him. Rather than me all working solo here na local market the soul, and by then I bring him money big plum money coming side. But so was all can my pani market our side na market him something our side, and by bring big plum revenue coming side of country Papua New Guinea.
Mir nem lumem pious Christopher Camel Mrs. Plumem stop lap site Miriam Camel na lap site em Lilix Sablomi Florence Camel na mi plan maslo stop lap program play long 2006 Commonwealth game we been financing Mrs. Blomi Miriam na Florence logo down long Australia and long where uh, to play to play exposed long market problem. So me sana backside lot to play lot this play time. And how does it feel when you you know see her taking her trade and her craft overseas to an overseas audience? Uh, um, one blah, how much long me can help him, especially all Mary inside Lord this black and all um, um, this black talent all he got long walk him all kind craft or some billum. This la initiative, Ting Tin Bell and me got long M. Uh, me must on a backside long M. Na Mrs. Blomi long Salem to plug along Australia. Me walk him because me like look him this black and all new black and trade inside long old America talent na tin tin me like sun up backside long long sun up backside long mama especially on mama like this like trade like help him all so that uh, all outside well you can look him that this like talent gift all he got there it's there na that's why na me sun up backside lamb to see that them can walk him. Pius is actually my elder brother and that's his wife and uh, you know in every every business everything you want to do you need support financially before you go out into the outside world or the outside to source funding mm -hmm. or to get support and at the time I was a mother from the village I couldn't do anything and I have been struggling to try and promote the idea of the Bilum and trying to get my Bilum dress and Bilum uh, bags out into the market so the first exposure was having the Billum dresses to go out uh, at the Commonwealth Games in 2006. That's what, that was when, like, it was my Billum that would be going there. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't go, it would be, it, it wouldn't look, ni look nice with that. Mm -hmm. So I had to come and me and Miriam had to see <coughs> and he had to fund it. So he was the person that first had me and the Billums to go out on the international market from his pocket, from his little business that he does. And he's actually a local uh, a local business person. He's got a technical shop that he does his uh, technical um, uh, fiction of those machineries and all this. And at the same time, he, sh he sells stationary goods. And this is guest house where he's, um, uh, he's um, slowly uh, building to taking people to come in here. Mm -hmm. So from the little that he does, he at least have something to support me. Mm -hmm. So it's not only the Commonwealth, Commonwealth game and it was that, it's, it's family. Mm -hmm. And whatever I need, I come to him and he supports me a lot. I should say that in, in cash, plane tickets, or even with vehicle, he's got cars, so he supports me to move around and all this. So he's been the strong person with his wife behind me, pushing me. So I'm proud to have him. This is Shomai Kamel, uh, she is my niece, and that's Deborah Jokai, that's my daughter. And, um, and um, being a mother, transferring of a traditional skill to a daughter is a very important part of my life. And uh, there will be one day I will not be around, and it is very important that my daughter and my niece and all those uh, young girls out there, they have to know the art of weaving. Sooner or later, we might not have Bilum art if we, if we do not take that thought with our younger, younger generation. I'm a happy mother, and um, I try my best, very best, to transfer the skill to my daughter and to my niece and the other nieces too. And um, I'm glad. Bilum has got a little bit of its approach uh, forward and I hope we will make the best of it with the younger generation. Thank you.
So how supportive have your family been, you know, in this whole quest? My family are very, very supportive. And, um, yeah, I think uh, the Jaukais and the Camels, they're very supportive. And, um, and then, like, it's really tough, I should say. And I'm actually, um, being a single mom, going into business, and uh, turning around and seeing my brothers and uh, at my back is amazing. You know, I can run around, I can do all this, but when I have problems and uh, it's like, uh, you know, like I, well, there are times where I get like shot down by someone, uh, especially women saying, oh, you know, all this. Uh, that's where I tend to my brothers and they're always there. Yeah. I have a good family. What can you say to young women out there or, you know, young men even who intend on pursuing this, you know, pursuing billums and pursuing designing billums? What can you say as advice to them, seeing as you came from um, a background where you struggled through it? Billum, I will one day die. Billum has to go. Somewhere, somehow, these young girls, young women out there, you have to take it. It is not something, it's how I handle Bilum from my own uh, style. But from your style, you can achieve something. You can never be me. You can never take the approaches I take, but you can have your own style and your own approach. So take it, start revisiting your tradition, your culture. There's Bilum, there's other things that are out there that you need to do. So for those young weavers and all those that are out there that are watching, life is a challenge. Never back off. And if I can stand up and if I can be outstanding and being a single mom and if I can do that, what's wrong with you not handling that? Come out, let's, let's move. Forget the critics. Let it go and just walk about now. So what's the future like for Bill & Mary? What, how do you see your designs and your, your business, basically? How do you see it turning out in the future? I, um, I see a good future out there for me, for my children, for my family, my community, my people, and my country. I see a good future out there because I've gone through years of uh, trying to find something better out there. And should I leave, uh, should I leave this, um, like, awesome, suppose die come up on me, I will die a happy person and I will leave a lot of memories because I've got, um, I've created history on its own. And I'm, I'm like, seriously, um, I've done a lot with Billum. And people one day, or some people one day will say, Florence did that. And, uh, and uh, I think um, I see a bright future and I'm saying that there's, a, there's hope in Bilum because I've come a long way with it. And uh, I just want to sit back and smile and see where it goes. Thank you so much for watching us, Papua New Guinea. And that's all we have from Coldplay's Goroka on this edition of Rendezvous with Leanne. Thank you so much once again to Florence, the Bilumeri, and the family, the Kamel family, and the Jaukae family. Motave holugule.